In my last video, I I was talking about an experience I had as a child, and I I feel like I just can't really capture the road that led me to where I am now, the person I am now. It's so hard to talk about. I, I can't believe it's this hard. I thought it'd be easy. I expected it to be easy, and I was looking forward to sharing it with the world. And um, it's like I always seem to oversimplify the past in my mind, because uh, there's parts I don't want to remember. and. And there's also people I might have trouble talking about because some of them are still around and some of them are kind of, some of them are close to me and might see a video of mine and then I would lose them as a friend or, you know, a confidant. But I don't have to name names, I guess. Just, I, I saw so much phoniness growing up and... It took a long time for me to realize you don't have to be that way. When I was young, I I tried, you know. Um, I knew so many phony people. Uh, I didn't learn what it's like to just be a real person from too many people because I didn't get to spend much time with people like that. My Uncle David was like that, but, you know, you can't even cram all the times we spent together into a year, you know, in my whole life. Uh, I mean, he was a man who... Uh, apart from his family, he would go a decade without talking to anybody. And he's hard to reach. I mean, uh, he's even talking about canceling his telephone because he doesn't call anybody. He has no long distance service and he doesn't want anybody's phone number. But we're free to call him. <laughs> he's, um, he's such a damaged person and he's brilliant. He's a brilliant man. And it's my wish that I can. Maybe on one of my next visits, I can talk him into uh, doing a, a video where maybe I can interview him. Because he's a colorful character, and I think everybody would just get a kick out of him. He's got a zillion stories to tell, and most of them are very funny. <laughs> I don't feel it's fair uh, telling him myself. Uh, but uh, his religious upbringing was bad, and... Uh, I remember I was like, I think I was eight or nine, I think. I don't remember exactly. It all blends together, but I remember being being at my grandparents' house, and my Uncle David was visiting at that time, and it was a rare visit. We're talking back in the 70s, you know, and, uh, and I, I didn't want to go. I, I hated that place. It wasn't uh, a problem with God. It was a problem with all that phoniness. I, and it was so boring. I wasn't allowed to be myself. And nobody was their self. I know, because I live with a lot of these people. <laughs> and that's not the way they are in real life. The way they presented themselves to the world. And uh, I asked my Uncle David, why, you know, why isn't he getting ready to go to church? And he says, uh, I don't go to church anymore. I'm, I'm a grown-up man and I don't have to. And I was, I remember I was stunned when he told me this. And I, I said, why not? Uh, aren't you afraid of going to hell? And he says, I don't believe in hell. It didn't occur to me that was even possible. Because I believed in hell. Heaven was a little more hard to believe in. You know, nobody likes to be tortured. We can all, we've all burned ourselves. And I... Uh, to imagine that going on, you know, times infant, in, infant. See, we all get to be immortal, it turns out. <laughs> you get two choices. And he gave me a, a, an option I hadn't hadn't occurred to me. But I, I didn't jump into atheism just because he told me he didn't believe in hell or God. I just knew that, wasn't it cool he didn't have to go to that horrid, horrid place? where they used to drag him as a kid. You know, and to be artificial. To be forced to go up and pretend you got saved so everybody will stop wagging their tongues because I'm a whole two years older than someone else who got saved the week before. I was so 
furious about that as a kid. And I prayed about it. I, I apologized to God. And I also remember apologizing to God that I was sorry that I doubted this whole bit about Jesus, but I didn't understand it, and would he please help me to understand it better? I mean, what the hell? He did it for Joseph Smith. He did it for Muhammad. He did it for Paul. Uh, they all had visitations, you know, from on high and a message. So why can't I expect the same thing? I mean, it happened to Reverend Moon. He found out he was Jesus reincarnated. And, you know, why not? A Jewish Jesus, now a Korean one. You know, uh, sign me up. You know, uh, I just... It's really hard to explain, but I was always kind of a backsliding Christian when I was a Christian because I had a problem with Jesus. I, I was... I... I I didn't get it. I still don't get it. I never got it. But I was sure scared of it when I was a kid, and I, I didn't want to get tortured. That was really the point. You know, even non-existence sounded better than an eternity of being surrounded with that same stale environment and that same old ancient music and Obviously, you know, I mean, I had nothing to compare heaven with except the church I was going to and the people I was going with. And an, an eternity with that crowd sounded like a drag because just a, a Sunday morning, you know, Sunday afternoon was more than enough. And, I mean, these people would go twice a week, sometimes three times a, a week to church, you know, morning and evening, uh, I think sometimes on a Wednesday, if I think it was. And they would go to an annual conference. <sighs> but it, I would read the Bible and I'm thinking, this isn't what you're following. Oh, but they'd turn around and point to something else that showed that they were. And I'd point it to that one. They'd tell me, yeah, but that got disqualified later on because of something Paul said later on. And it's like, like, it's like the Bible was a team effort or something. Like oh, every writer was in on this. And it's like you, you pass the pass the torch to the next one and he lets you know what the what the message is now meanwhile I don't hear anything from God and if God wanted to talk to me even now and I don't see why he wouldn't I mean he talked to uh, an, he talked an illiterate man into writing his message down or maybe he passed it on uh, they talked to uh, you know, Joseph Smith who was just a you know, uh, just a country con artist, you know, selling, you know, fortune telling and dowsing and treasure maps that led to nothing except an expense. I mean, the boy had a criminal record, and God talked to him and gave him a Bible. You know, uh, why not talk to me? It's not like I didn't pray, because I did. I don't anymore, but I used to. I used to do it all the time. I used to talk to God all the time. Yeah. Anytime I was alone, I had never felt I was alone. But I don't feel that he's here now. You know, it's like people can feel the devil too. You now, I've been scared, I've been spooked out. I'm just a human being, I'm an emotional creature. I'm processing reality through my perceptions, which are limited. But uh, people need to understand one thing. My, my mind is not closed. You know, I, I enjoy the interaction of other ideas. Uh, I get a kick out of pagans. I love pagans. Uh, because they, they cherish the earth. And I can agree with them on that. And uh, I get a kick out of them anyway. Uh, and they don't tell you about their religion, really, if you don't want to know. Because it almost belittles it. They don't seem to, none that I've ever met ever actively actively encouraged me to be one. Even when I asked questions, they were kind of like, hey, well, that's sort of my thing, and it's a personal thing, and, you know, pick up some books and read it on your own. But, I mean, they weren't trying to get me in there, in their group. So, I mean, I'm willing to listen to anybody as long as um, it doesn't cost as much as Scientology does. <laughs> anyway, I'm running long here, and I don't know if I made a point, but... Just trying to share a little bit of 
why I'm an atheist and uh, why it isn't a choice I made. It was a conclusion I came to. And I think that's all i got to say about that.